our guest that will be joining us um, by a phone call. Now, his name is Joshua Osho. He is Africa's number one business automation consultant. He helps um, experts, entrepreneurs, and companies develop their ideas, products, and services into profitable, sustainable systems that keep working for them even while sleeping. And he is a trained business analyst and also an Amazon best-selling author with over 10 books. He's an alumni of the renowned Covenant University, among many others. He has joined us this week. He's on the line right now to have a conversation with us from Lagos in Nigeria. Good morning, Joshua. How are you doing? Good morning, good morning. Doing Hello, well. good morning. How are you doing? Doing very well, doing very well. Thank you very much for joining you, us. All right, our conversation this morning is learning to unlearn and, and relearn. relearn. Now, what do you think it means to unlearn, relearn, and even learn? Now, that, that topic is, is one thing very, very important. I, I count it as the the certificate of the of the twenty first century literate. That is, it's a, it's it's no is a is one thing very very important to learning to becoming a literate in this present world. That means for for you to learn, that's getting understanding of something. Now, unlearning means removing that understanding because there's something new that you need to fix in that space. That's the category. All right. All right. So um, what do you think are the contributing factors to the reason why people find it a little bit hard to learn or unlearn or even relearn? I didn't get the question. All right. So what do you think is the contributing factor to why people find it difficult to learn, unlearn or relearn? Now, what I've found that as an educator and the dealing with experts and entrepreneurs is this. A lot of us get to achieve what we have learned in the past to something that we don't want to lose. So because of that thing, we don't want to unlearn what we have learned in the past. Because maybe that thing gets to feed us or maybe that thing gets to de uh, determine our perception before others. So we decide not to unlearn. Mm. All right. Um, so why is it important? You know, you know, you've just, you know, you've clearly stated that this important, this conversation is very important. You know, given the year that we had in 2020 with a new reality and a new normal being formed as a result of the pandemic, you know, which also, you know, led to lockdown and a lot of businesses being shut, schools being shut, you know, governments around the world scrambling to, you know, to, know, to, you know, make sense of this new reality and new normal. Why is it important, you know, moving forward as a person, as a business, as a nation, why is it now even more important to relearn, learn and unlearn? Now, it's so it's so important because nearly everything is getting modified. Without, without, I tell people, uh, as an automation engineer, I tell people that if you don't bring the new normal into what you are doing, then when the new normal becomes the norm, then you are far left behind. So it's, it's just very, very important that we get that understanding of what the future the future of work, the future, the future in, in the business or the future in academics or education as a whole, and then infuse it into, into what we had before because the background will never change. I was speaking recently at a program and I told them, I said, I said um, we have technology coming up, so it's AI and the rest. But one thing very important there, we are only trying to improve and make better what was in the past. But if, for example, I said the arts, I said the heart works on automation, that means even while we are sleeping, it keeps on working. But now we, kind of, we now make devices that can work on their own. So we are only trying to replicate what was in the past, but ensuring that we can create systems that can work for us in now and in the future. So if we decide that only because of the arts, it will only because we won't stay with the old, we won't go with the new, then we end up with keeping our 
our time and wasting our time. So you know, um, you know, um, schools have now been shut indefinitely. You know, businesses are still open tentatively. You know, um, you know, working remote from home has now become um, a trend. It gr is now becoming a growing trend in Nigeria. My question to you is: What things do you think? You know, would, that would, do you think we need to learn, unlearn, and relearn in Nigeria, our country? You know, given the context of the COVID nineteen. Yeah, thanks for that question. What what I think we need to learn is this: we need to we need to break off from the ideology of my own to mm. our own. Uh -huh. One thing that that I've, I've seen over the past five years that has differentiated people in the educational sector is leaving. Okay, this is my school to let have a platform. In these next ten years, that was what that's what that's what Nigeria needs. Build platforms for education. I have seen schools try to do that in this past one year, call me to be at least past one year, and it has really helped them because students can assess their school without needing to be anywhere around them. And that's where they can grow and they will soon make our mm. That's it, that's it. Um, interesting one. And I want us to talk about parents yeah. um, parenting, schooling, education, and all of that. Because, I mean, they say your foundation is from home. Charity begins from home. Mm. How can parents in instill the idea of unlearning? Mm. The, what is popular is learning mm. for um, every child. You learn to grow, you learn to eat and everything. But then some children pick up bad habits uh, from their everyday life, and then you know it's not very popular for them to teach them how to unlearn. So, what what do you think parents can do to teach children as they grow to unlearn certain behaviors and habits that they've picked up? Now, if I got you clearly about parents, I think I think there's a lot of work on on parents, on parents' shoulders to do because the more the children you have, the more you need to learn about them. And then ensure that you are you can hold you can hold thoughts when discussing with them or passing new attributes. I want I want I, I tell parents importantly every time I say you need to connect before you can correct at all times. You need to connect before you can correct. So if you so if you want to connect with the children to influence their habits or influence their lifestyle, then you have to study well. Uptight, give maybe um, 30 minutes a day or one hour a week to study about their areas and then develop your knowledge so you can connect with them and then you can influence them. That's what is very important. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for actually shedding light into that because it actually bothers me when, um, you know, children pick up certain behaviors and then, especially children of this age, information goes yeah. everywhere. They are very smart, very sharp, and they already know how to use gadgets. A two-year-old will teach you how to use certain apps that you don't even mm. know about. And Parents are finding it very difficult to, you know, teach them out on learned yeah. behaviors. And, you know, I like that you've been able to shed more light into that. Now, so we're going into strategies yeah. for um, unlearning, um, that is strategies for learning, unlearning, and, and relearning. Re and we'll be reading out some um, strategies that we would like you to shed more light into it. Are you, are you ready, Joshua? Yeah, I'm all right, so now the first strategy on our list this morning says, um, first, you have to recognize that the old mental model is no longer relevant or effective. Now, um, they say this is a challenge because we are usually unconscious of our mental models. They are the proverbial water to the fish. In addition, we might be afraid to admit that the existing model is growing outdated. We have built our reputations and careers on the mastery of these old models. And um, letting go can seem like starting over and losing our status, authority, or sense of self. I, I think that um, letting go of old models sometimes can be very difficult because mm -hmm. that is what we have grown to mm -hmm. know. Like he has, he, has, he has pointed out that, you know, 
it is important that you, you know, leave some old models behind and adopt something new, especially with the changing times, yeah. with the COVID-19, with the pandemic, and with new technology, mm. with AI and all of that. For businesses right now, they are leaving old technologies behind to, you know, learn new things. It would be very interesting to see a business that still uses typewriter mm. at this time and age. Maybe they have it as an antique, uh, an antiquity, is that what it is called? <laughs> or as a, a vintage yeah. thing, but if that is what they're using for their mode of oppression at this time, it would be a very strange thing. But, I mean, that's what I feel. I feel like every time, as times are changing, you should actually adopt and change with time yeah. to make yourself a better person, yeah. really. Yeah, Joshua, what do you think? No, I think it's, it's very good that the old mental model is, is uh, modified. I won't say fully renewed, but it's modified. Um, I, 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 once, I, I usually challenge, challenge parents that it's not only what you think is success that is success mm. for your children. Okay. Because sometimes the, the, mind, the, the exposure of the parents can determine the, le the kind of uh, understanding of uh, success that the children have. So what I basically tell them, especially for careers, who are building their, who are building their careers, is that ex expose your children to platforms, if possible, to mentors that are better than you. It will help, it will help them know opportunities that that skill or that talent or that behavior that you call stubbornness it can be turned into something that is most of most value to, to you and your family. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, get exposed to platforms. If you, without, without platforms, I, I remember recently I, 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 had, I had a platform called Smart Things, and then I brought in some teenagers to me and I said, you can go beyond your school. You can have trainers, you can have companies to intern you, even if you are 13, and work from home and get value. So with, with that new model of education, if everyone can invite this, we can ensure that we have children going for more careers that the parents never had idea for. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. So let us go into, let's have a look at our second strategy for learning um, to online and relearn this morning. And the second strategy we have here says, ask more questions, trade cleverness for curiosity. We came into the world brimming with curiosity and open to learning. Yet for many, rigid educational systems that rewarded test scores over creativity sucked the joy out of learning. In today's world, learning isn't an exercise we finish in school. Our learning is capped to the extent, to the extent of our questions. Most of us live with answers to questions we've never thought or bothered to ask. So as, so as you consider the problems around, start asking more questions. How do we know this is the best approach? Since we're all wired with confirmation bias, we must proactively seek out information to contradict our assumptions. Very interesting. This is actually, um, you know, this is, um, you know, it's a kind of, it's leaning towards what um, Joshua has already said, you know, with the education system, you know. Um, you know, it's, I feel like it's time for us to revisit the curriculum that these children are learning with. You know, this curriculum has been something that hasn't been changed for Even a very, for very long time. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it is time that it is revisited. I think it is time, you know, even given this new normal of education, given this new normal of... This, Remote learning yeah, the, and exactly. all of that, it yes. Is, it is a reality that is very strange to both parents and child, you know. Um, you know, 10 years along the line, if this is still the normal, it won't be strange to those children that are coming. But to this particular set of children, it is very strange. It's very strange to be at home for long periods of time. It's very strange to be learning learning in your mufti, you know, in the comforts of your pyjamas, in at home on it. It is very strange because, you know, with education comes that, you know, I iron my school uniform, yes, I put on my school sharply, bag, take my lunch bag, box, yes, and I go and into to the school. school bus but, you know, school. so it's like, you know, you, you know, that process, you know, it builds a kind of a mindset, you know, of movement from a personal space to a working space, mm -hmm. as into a school space, to a learning space. But when you now bring the learning, 
learning space into the personal space. It is a reality that, you know, children, you know, would obviously battle with. So I think it's time for us to, you know, revisit the curriculum. But, you know, also, you know, taking into consideration what we also said on the show about curiosity, we've said that curiosity is actually a discipline. You know, you need to discipline yourself to be curious about particular things. A lot, you know, just as a writer of said, a lot of people accept things that they don't question. You know, I love how the writer puts it. It says, uh, most of us live with answers to questions we've never thought of or bothered to ask. Very interesting. We live with answers to questions that, you know, so they say the sky is blue. Why? Uh, you know, you're like the sky, and you know, are we, we're not really asking like, hmm, is it possible that it's green? <laughs> like, what if I'm not just the one seeing the color do you, currently? You know, you know, or they say it is, you know, or they say, you know, um, um, it is light, what, what comes after the sun. Uh, oh no, okay, when they say something like the sun lights up the moon, that the moon doesn't pr produce its own sun, have um, its own light. light yeah. Have you done research to understand and why would you tell me <laughs> why that? you know so you know i feel like you know the write-up is very correct a lot of us live with questions uh, um answers to questions that we've not bothered to ask we've not bothered to explore and you know that actually harms our curiosity it harms it, it harms this thing about learning to unlearn and relearn you know new modes of thinking new information essentially joshua what do you think do you have any thoughts on this yeah, I strongly believe about this curriculum that the curriculum needs to be modified overall. That's why I, I, there's a big difference in tertiary education when when a child is homeschooled by a doctor or professor, and when he went to a school that uh, and when all his friends went to a school that were not really the, the trainers were not that, not really that good, or even the old education system. It is always a, a very big difference, and that's because of curriculum. I strongly believe that it's high time that parents collaborate in this period that their, parents, their children are at home to decide what line they want their children to go to. I, there's, one, there's one system of education that, is so, that, that I love so much, and that's the Finnish, the Finnish education system by Finland. Okay. From the beginning, from the beginning of the, of, of please go on, please go on. Okay, now from the educational system, from three year old, they're already following a path of that that is, that is, that is um, correlates with their attitude. They are already they are already mentors from schools that are assigned to them at home. So this is even the best time for schools to consider that the teachers can spend more time with the students and get a connection more with the students than in the four walls of the building where the students are plenty. This is the best time to get more teachers to get to work remotely who are skilled but who don't have time to work with you in your, in your four walls of your school. This is also the best time for parents to get to mentors to mentor their children even while they are at home. Mm. Because the four walls of school can take them away from the right people that to mentor them, you can mentor them remotely. And you can even get the people that are, that, for example, if, my, if your child is, is showing interest in engineering, you can get mentors that are engineers already and are, and are working from home to mentor them remotely by having sessions with them. And that helps your child or helps your students in your school to ensure they develop their mindset to a better point. I, I really think schools right now if they are hearing this, should we look at that area to partner with professionals, companies, mentors to ensure that they develop their own curriculum because it might be harder to go to the education board of the nation or the state to allow to ask them or force them to change the curriculum so that you can just follow through and read a and new group of experts. But it's high time those things are, are done. Personal mm -hmm. All right, that that's a very that's a very thank good one. That. Really. Yeah. Thank you, thank <laughs> you for that. Okay, so let's go to the third strategy that we have this morning, and it says, "Be humble to gaining new perspectives." Mm -hmm. Now, ever met someone who was too full of their own brilliance? Of course, you have. They abound. Yet, IQ is not the strongest predictor of success. 
Likewise, the best solutions can only be found when we are brave enough to admit we don't have a monopoly on knowledge and humble enough to listen to others whose, part, whose perspectives could burden our own. Mm -hmm. This is... Hmm, a very interesting yeah. one. A lot of times, very intelligent people or people with very high IQs believe that, you know, so once I know it or since I know it, I don't think whatever it is that you have to say is important or whatever it is that you have to say or whatever. I don't think I can learn anything from you. That's the right thing. Mm. They, they feel like other people's knowledge is beneath them mm. like um, because they don't have master's degree or PhD like they do. So because they're selling fish or meat in the market, they cannot tell you mm -hmm. anything. You can't tell me. You can't speak to me. And I think that that's a very sad thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very sad thing to do. Yeah. Be humble and learn from everybody and anybody. Anybody can teach you anything. Exactly, in yeah. fact, every moment in your life is a teachable moment. Yeah. If you hear something actually. that is different from what it is that you know, I think it will actually help you to listen. Yeah. You know, that way you realize that you can actually do it a better way yeah. than the way that you know. Nobody yeah. says that how you know it is not good. Mm -hmm. But how about you learn a faster way or a more reliable way yeah. or a more acceptable way yeah. or a better, you know, just having another knowledge added to yours should never be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that being humble to learn a new perspective is a very important thing that yeah. we should do yeah. in know, this age and time. Yeah, I, you know, my favorite sets of, <laughs> my favorite people to learn things from are actually children. I ah. love speaking to children. You know, a lot of time, um, a lot of adults don't, and I think it's quite peculiar, not peculiar, it's, it happens in Nigeria. I've seen it happen quite a few times, a lot in okay. Nigeria, where, you know, older people don't indulge children. So they just say, go and play games or go and watch cartoons. Or whatever or, it is that you have to yeah, say, so they to just go yeah, away. Yeah, just go and play cards or something. As long as you're having fun or playing, then I'm fine. You know, I prefer to indulge children because they actually like talking to adults, <laughs> you know. And I like indulging children because, you know, it's, 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 for, it's sense it shows me that there's still innocence in the world, first of all. And, you know, because they are, they, are, they are highly curious, so they ask a lot of questions. And then in their questions, you realize that they're asking you questions that you two are probably not thinking of. And then you start thinking of it, you're like, actually... Okay, why? Yeah, <laughs> like, why? Actually, why is the sun golden? Like, is it gold or yellow? Yeah, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, so they ask questions because they are so curious and, they, you know, they're so little and they don't know much yet. They just want to know everything and they just keep absorb, asking you. Absorb, absorb knowledge. They just keep knowledge. asking you. And, you know, when in their questions, you know, is where I learn, you know, because it makes me think about particular things that I have accepted as, you know, knowledge. You know, it makes me think about particular things that, okay, it makes me think about those answers I have not bothered to look into, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, you know, is, I, I find it very fascinating talking to younger people. Let us move on quickly. All right. So the next um, strategy to learn to online and relearn we have this morning is to embrace the discomfort of change. This is a very important one. It says, this says, it's been said that change is the only constant thing. What is stopping a lot of us from unlearning is the mentality of that's how things are done around here. And it has been a contributing factor to why some people are still sticking to outdated approaches. Sticking to familiar ways can spare psychological discomfort, discomfort, but it puts you at risk of losing your place in a world marching, charging, and rapidly moving forward. You know, we just, we just said this, you know, um, that, you know, this, you know, it actually goes into this thing about curiosity. It also goes into... Yeah, they the work, they work about, hand you know, in um, hand. ...accepting new perspectives. But Joshua, what do you think about this particular strategy? Now, I think um, embracing that discomfort of change is very, very paramount and very, very important. As you said earlier on, looking at children get to question things, or the question things in their nucleus or what they just see in their surroundings, is that they have learned things from our teenagers. They, they get to, as soon as they, they see things, they can test it out. So you cannot just kill the person. That have, they have killed their, their ideas and their questions a lot when they were young. 
they still have a lot of questions and a lot of experiment, not just questions anymore that they are going through. So if when you spend when you spend time around them and then see what they are, see what the kind of questions they are bringing out to you, you get to question even your ideologies that you had in the past as a child. That means that most likely they have already killed that idea or killed that mindset inside of you. So it's very very important that everyone looks at change, looks at questioning the the psychology, the tradition that we had before. We have a, a wonderful tradition in, in a, a working in Nigeria, for example, that you don't you don't ask questions. It's like an elder. You don't you don't get to ask like why are you doing this? Or like you must you ask? Why must you ask? And it's killing a lot of in, um a lot of geniuses among the among the young ones, among the children. And I think that's one thing that as youth that we need to really look at to ensure that we embrace change because they will surely question it more and more. And so we saw the we saw the the SARS process. A lot of youth, a lot of young people are questioning and more people sit down questioning. Once we embrace change, we can to really see change. All right, all right. Um, yeah. Let's take the very last strategy we have this morning, and it says knowledge management. Now, this is the first and foremost of people's issues. The success of knowledge management initiatives depend upon people's motivation, their willingness, and their ability to share knowledge and use the knowledge of others. The essence of managing knowledge is concerned with deciding with whom to share, what is to be shared, how is it to be shared, and ultimately sharing and using it. Joshua, do you, do you agree with this? Um, now, about knowledge management, it's very, very important that we, that we, know, how, we know how to manage knowledge. Right. And, uh, and um, the sort of, manage, of knowledge management initiatives, yes, depends on, on people's motivation. Mm. People's, people's motivation will determine how much, how much of, how much you utilize knowledge or how much success you make with your knowledge. And I think that that's very, very important. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, yeah, you know, um, you know, we, you know, earlier on the show, we said that knowledge is actually awareness. Awareness. You know, and, you know, managing what you are aware about, I think, is very important. Mm. You know, so for, you know, that's why, you know, on, you know, you have things like parents' restrictions on the new technologies that children have access to now. You know, I don't agree with, with this I, with this idea that, okay. it, that a 10 year old cannot have a mobile phone. I don't really, I don't really, I don't buy into things like that. You okay. Know? Because of, for instance, security reasons. All right. Um, and this, you know, because also we are in a digital age, we are in a mobile age, so that a child, you know, they are the, I think they are Generation Z. So, you know, they... <laughs> they, are they? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think they are Generation Z. Okay. So they are the ones that they have been born with this technology. Now, if you are depriving such a child of that technology in my opinion anyway i feel like you are not you are you, you, you know you're not um indulging the child enough in the world around him so when we were younger it was quite different from this particular set of children that what, what we had access to you know the technologies we were using i remember you know um the calculators that we used to take <laughs> for those examinations and things Scientific, like this, you know, you, you know, know, all those mm -hmm. cosine and all, yes. all of that, you know, obviously now it's different and, you know, you can actually do all of those things with a mobile phone. I feel like if you are not, if you are not indulging, you know, you know, a, a child in the world around him, you are cheating that child of of a particular experience. Okay. Now, now coming coming back to knowledge management, even then, when a ten, you know, honestly, I believe a ten year old should have access to a mobile phone. Even when a ten year old um, has ac access access to, to, access to, to a mobile, to mobile phone, phone okay. you know, the knowledge and the information said child is receiving should be managed. Monitored it and managed. It should be monitored yeah. and managed. And this just in, it doesn't just relate to, to young um, children. It also relates to us. To you know, everyone, you know, actually. You know, Parents, grandparents, yeah, yeah. anybody. We need to be really, you know, um, intentional and... Um, you know, we are sensitive about the information we're taking in every right. day mm -hmm. because of, we, we know we, we live in an information age. We live in a social media age, you know, a digital age where every information, you know, I was, I was arguing with my dad 
the other day that I don't have to watch, sit down and watch the news to know what is going on around the you world. You can have it on I the go. It, it's you know, different you, you now. You know, it's different yes. now. So, I, I, you, know, you know, I wake up in the morning, I go on my Instagram, I go on BBC Twitter or whatever, you know, I go on news channels Twitter and I'm getting updates, you know, about what's going on around the world. So, you know, um, this... It's, it's, you know, even then when we are learning to relearn and online, when we are learning to open up our minds up to new information and new perspectives, I think it is important that we are intentional about what the things we are taking in and we are sensitive. You know, if something is not good for your mental health, yeah. stop looking at it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you, yeah. you know, essentially. All right, we want to say a major thank you to Joshua Oshowo, who is thank a business automation much. consultant, yes. for joining us this morning and sharing his wealth of knowledge with us. Thank you so much. And um, the conversation is on learning to unlearn and relearn. We appreciate that you've been able to you know, give us a yeah. lot from what you know and, of course, your um, expertise. And um, um, it's just important that we, we state it that knowledge is power. Yes. Knowledge is key. And then, of course, like we said earlier in the previous conversation on experiences, that take it or leave it, whatever experiences that you um, have can be a great learning tool yeah. for you in life. But also, if it is an old model, I think it is time for you to leave it behind and, and pick up something yes. new. Yeah. It's time for you to move with the moving train. Yes. And um, <laughs> yes, actually... Um, adapt what yeah. is new and also one other thing is um, learning new perspectives yeah. it is very difficult for um, people to actually pick up new perspectives and um, apply it to their everyday life mm -hmm. all of these things that we've discussed is for everybody in their everyday life either you are a parent or you are a teacher or a business person or a professor or a grandparent whatever it is that you're doing it is very important that you leave what it is that you think behind, mm. listen to what everybody is saying, and see how you can make it work for yourself. Yeah. It will help you in your everyday life. Essentially. Um, so, Joshua, if you're still there, do you have any final thoughts on this conversation this morning? I didn't, I didn't get that. What, I, what are your final thoughts on this conversation that we've had to learn, uh, learning to unlearn and relearn? What are your final thoughts on this conversation? The final thoughts on this conversation are basically this. Number one, it's high time that we decide to learn something new, to build a new level of knowledge, to allow children to explore and then to learn from what they're trying to explore. That means when they ask the questions, you do big research on so you can give them enough information and not shun their curiosity to kill their innovation in their lives and then ensure that we have a platform so that we can ensure that life are much, see much more opportunities than leaving them in the circle of only our influence so that we can go better experts from our mission. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua Joe Osho, for joining us this morning.